my name is Mike Gaben and welcome to my KSP campaign. Last episode, one of the things that I did is I set up a maneuver node to have Val, Genely, and McNan rendezvous with the defunct Minmus Driller 2. And I realized that I really should be pushing up my Apoapsis so of that maneuver, so I'm adjusting it now. Pushing up that Apoapsis, I'm starting to run into the moon, which actually is part of the reason why I didn't push up my Apoapsis last episode. But if I start bringing... There we go. Coming back a few orbits gets me not encountering the moon. And now what I want to do is adjust the position of my Apoapsis so that the encounter... Hmm. I want the encounter to occur right there at periapsis, but it doesn't seem like whatever I do with the apoapsis, it doesn't seem like I'm moving around the position of the encounter indicators. And it took me a while to figure this out. And actually this made me glad that I came back and checked on this. Turned out that the encounter that I had set up was for when Minmus Driller 2 was going to be meeting the Korion 1 right there at Periapsis. Or in other words, um, I was trying to do the entire rendezvous in just a single burn. Uh, that wasn't going to work, or at least would have been incredibly difficult to do, and definitely would have been a mess. And it turned out what I needed to do is just push it a little bit forward in time. So here I'm just gonna move the node ahead there we go, I just moved it ahead a second. And suddenly you saw the close encounter indicator jump there. What ended up happening is that now the node is just after periapsis. And now when I start adjusting my apoapsis, there we go. Now the node is behaving the way I expect it to. So obviously I played around with this a little bit. I would like to get as much of this initial burn done uh, right here at Periapsis, where I'm going to be taking uh, advantage of the O-Birth effect. And it turned out that the burn was going to be about three days from now, and we'll be getting to that just a little bit later in this episode. But why don't we right now get ourselves out to the moon, where also last episode I inserted into a low lunar orbit the Moon Harvester. This thing is supposed to go down to the surface and start harvesting ore. It can also do some converting, creating resources for me as well. But we need to pick a landing spot. So I've got ScanSack going here. This is my high res scan of the moon. It's not quite done, a couple of gray spots still there. It's interesting. But what I need to do is get on the resource overlay. There we go. Ah, yes, all the purple bits are where we find ore. Now, my orbit is largely equatorial, so right away I'm zeroing in on the far side crater over here. And the ore seems to be about 5% concentration. It really seems highly concentrated up there in the northern basin, but I don't have the delta V right now to change my orbit. Maybe we'll hop over there. Uh, a later on once we've created some resources but right now my landing spots definitely going to be in the far side crater here and what I'm trying to do is figure out how to get the resource overlay onto this mini map and it turned out I couldn't figure it out so rather than watching me continue to fumble with this why don't we cut to the final stages of our descent you might be noting the waypoint that I have there uh, I put that there, that's a custom waypoint that I was able to put there using the waypoint manager mod. And it's just a general target. Give me just a general idea of where I would like to be. I don't have to be specifically in that spot, I'm not married to it. Uh, and this thing's pretty heavy, it's definitely heavier than any of the other landers I put down and it is rather top heavy. It's not what you would call nippy, so I'm, I'm taking this landing pretty cautiously. And while I make my way down to the surface. Why don't we talk about what else is coming up in this episode? Obviously, we'll continue to work with our moon harvesting efforts. We'll get back to the Korion one. We'll also be briefly visiting the Arm B and the Arm E, my two asteroid chasers. They are both out there doing things for me. Well, with asteroids, that would make sense, wouldn't it? But I think the highlight of this will be the capture burn for moho 2 moho 2 is closing in on well moho it's my second mission to moho and we're going to be capturing 
trying to capture it once again getting a capture around moho is always uh well a little bit of a challenge it's a big burn and we got a few contracts we'll get to all that a little bit later but right now we're coming to the closing stages of this landing we're about 200 meters from the surface waiting oh there's my shadow i can see the lights on the surface again we'll try and do this as softly as I can because of the weight of this thing. And touch. Whoa, 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 whoa. There you go. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. There we are. <laughs> okay, so we got a couple of drills here to deploy, but before that, we got to start thinking about power. Uh, I got two little solar panels, but I really want to get one of these gigantic. Oh shoot! What's it? Ah, activate receiver. Yeah, this is KSP Interstellar putting in this extra stuff. It has something to do with power train. Oh, we're in solar only mode. I see that at the top. So yeah, activate receiver. Yeah, there it goes. All I want is a solar panel. We also have some radiators. Using the drills does generate quite a bit of heat. What do we got? Our exposure is just over 60%. Not brilliant. Might want to reorient this a little bit later, but for now it's fine. Okay, two. Yeah, I put it on an action group. There goes my drills. Alrighty, let's see how they're doing here. Whoa, jeez. Yeah, there's a gazillion resources here. Again, KSB Interstellar Extended, but all I want to do is, oh, there it is, start harvesting. All I want to do is deal with the ore, the stock one. All right. Yep, that seems to be working well. Let's, I wonder how they're doing here. Ah, oh, the menu, so, okay. Up here towards the top, 0. 0.12 units of ore per second. I know if I get an engineer down here that this will go faster. And I do have an engineer up in Yoy Station, which is in orbit about the moon. But the issue is, is that their lander does not have enough fuel to get down to the surface. In fact, they are kind of dependent upon the resources that are hopefully coming from this particular harvester. So they got to wait for the harvester to come to them rather than the other way around. So this is clearly going to take some time. So we'll get back to this later. In the meantime, let's get out to the arm E. This was launched two episodes ago, and the mission is to hunt down a D-class asteroid and get it into orbit about Minmus. And we are just now leaving Kerbin's SOI, at which point it'll be time to tighten up our encounter. Now, one thing I noticed at launch, but I decided to proceed anyway, was the antenna. It's right over here. It's the KR-7. And it has a range of 90 megameters. And Kerbin's SOI is 84 megameters. That means if our separation from Kerbin increases by just six more megameters, that's only 6,000 kilometers, we will be out of communication range. And with remote tech, that means that this whole thing will go dead. Not sure what I was thinking. I mean, I've got the perfectly adequate Communitron 8088, which I've used a lot. You've seen it on a lot of my vessels. Maybe I just wanted to change it up, but this change up could end up costing this mission. Anyway, uh, a 35 meter per second burn, got my closest approach with the asteroid down to 16 kilometers and that's going to happen eight days from now. I'll definitely have to keep an eye on this probe and see how things go, but why don't I get to my other asteroid mission. This is the Arm B. Now bringing its second asteroid towards the moon. And, oh, we got a message. My altimetry scan with Ike is done. Oh, great, I started that last episode. That was quick. I'll let it go for a bit more. Let it map as much of Ike as it can, and then I'll move it into orbit around Duna, and that should finish off that contract, but that'll obviously have to be for later. What we got here is our 170 meter per second capture burn. We're obviously coming over the North Pole. You can tell from the way the camera just twirled around there very dramatically. Not that I had anything to do with that. 
gonna leave our apple apsis up nice and high. Uh, that is so I can make the inclination change really cheaply before sort of putting this thing into its final orbit. But as you can see, we are closing in on the conclusion of this burn. And I'm letting the remote tech flight computer take care of it because I'm just getting lazier and lazier with these things. All right, that's it. So now it's time for us to check on our inclination. Well, it doesn't look like the change has to be too, is going to be too much. Oh, wait, correction. 162 degrees out of phase. Okay, <laughs> got a major inclination difference. We were basically going around in opposite directions to the station that I want to rendezvous with. Okay, well that's going to have to be dealt out at the ascending node, which is way out near Apoapsis. And that's not going to be for another couple of hours. So in the meantime, why don't we check in on how our moon harvester is doing? Well, there's a little bit more ore. You know, this is a day later. I thought there would be more here. Oh, it's filling these top tanks too. Okay, that's what's going on. These top ones are actually for a contract to return ore to Kerbin. But I don't want to fill them just yet. And I was having some trouble getting it not to put ore in these upper tanks. I tried disabling the cross feed with the docking ports and adjusting the flow priority. That didn't seem to make any difference. Here I'll uh, time warp. I'll show you what I mean. See how the ore is still going in there. Now let's time warp a little bit quicker. <sighs> I'm trying to think, how am I going to get it not to do that? Uh-oh. Oh, shoot. I don't have any power. Yeah, we went into the night time and drained those batteries in no time with those... Well, wait, I got a fuel cell. Let's fire up this fuel cell. Oh, I can't. Of course I can't. I don't have a communication link. And Remote Tech says no communication, no power, no communication link. You can't do anything. Oh, man. Thanks, Remote Tech. So this thing's dead. Okay, we're going to have to wait for the sun to rise, which won't be for another three Kerbin days. Oh, so we'll check on this thing again a little later. Let's get back out to the arm B, which is now out towards the ascending node near Apoapsis, way up high above the moon. We got ourselves a 232 meter per second burn to pretty much flip this orbit around the other way. Thankfully, this thing is only pushing an A-class asteroid, and I still have plenty of Delta V left, so it's not going to be a problem. Alrighty, and there we go. Just a little bit more. Okay. And then we're going to just leave this thing in this orbit for now. The station I want to rendezvous with actually needs an extra piece of hardware to be able to connect the two asteroids together, but that's going to have to wait for a future launch. So for now, I'm just going to leave the RMB here going around the moon. But in the meantime, the Korion 1 is ready for its burn. Ooh! I'll have to remember to turn down the thrust limiter on these engines after this burn is complete. That's okay. These folks are veteran rocket jockeys. They're probably enjoying this ride. Anyway, this is the phasing orbit burn that we set up at the beginning of this video. Setting up the timing so that when we return back down here towards Periapsis, uh, we will be mini with our target, which is Minmus Driller 2. And we're coming in to the end of the burn now. Alrighty, let's get rid of the maneuver node and take a look at what we've got. Okay, the close encounter indicator is still a little bit away. Just lock it onto prograde here. Use a bit of RCS to kind of finish this off. You can see it just takes little puffs to have quite an effect. Let's go back. Eh, that's close enough. We'll fine tune this out towards Apoapsis. That's also where we're going to be making our inclination change. But that isn't going to be for another three days. So these folks have got a little bit of a weight on their hand before the next phase of this mission. In the meantime, Genely decided he needed to do a little bit of housekeeping. 
And the Karayan one, this is such an old vessel. I've had it for a long, long time and I keep just adding stuff to it. And so the outside here is becoming quite a hodgepodge of different things stuck to the side. And that's why I decided, why don't I add on this external storage locker, which I did last episode. Jeanly's gonna take advantage of this and sort of stow some stuff away. But it's going to have to be in a future episode that we're going to have to revisit the Karayan one now let's just do, well, I'm, I'm going to get the Moho very, very soon, but I got one quick more visit to take a look at the Moon Harvester where the sun has come up. <laughs> and I'm going to do a very quick orientation change, the purpose of which is to get those Gigantor solar panels better exposed to the sun. We are very close to the moon's equator, so the sun will just go right overhead. So if I have them the way they are right now, there we go. Perfect. That should give us pretty much 100% solar exposure all the time, or at least during the day. So we'll start up these drills again. We'll let this thing, we'll leave it alone. It should be fine for a while. Collect some ore, and we'll check in on it again in a future episode right now no more delay it's time to get ourselves to the moho 2 where i have made a fateful decision i have decided to ditch this final lander yeah in a previous episode you saw me umming and awing as to what to do with these landers it was an infernal robotics glitch that got, has them looking the way they are, and I think the odds of them actually successfully landing are pretty much nil. Very close to nil. Besides that, a botched injection back in episode 99 leaves this thing a little bit fuel starved, so I think the best thing in the world to do is to shed this mass before I get to the capture burn. I was honestly thinking about dropping this into an orbit where it might act as a bit of a communication relay. But the thing is, I do have a MOHO 3 on its way to MOHO, and with three satellites in orbit about MOHO, being able to satisfy the conditions of the communication contract shouldn't be a problem. So they're really, it's kind of like a high risk, low gain thing to do to hang on to this thing. So I think getting rid of it is the best idea. As for the capture burn, it is a 3,860 meter per second capture, which should be fine. I got 4,245 meters per second still in the vehicle before this burn started. Over there on the left, under the flight computer, you'll notice that I have the window open for the engine, and I had actually, the engine thrust is now at about 80%. And I actually just tweaked it down just a little bit more. I have to wait for the 30 second light delay though to be used up. And just to explain kind of what's going on with that, uh, Kerbal Engineer and Better Burn Time are both giving me a time for this burn of 10 minutes and 16 seconds and I rather do trust that. However, the Remote Tech Flight Computer thinks that this burn is going to be closer to just a little bit under 16 minutes. Um. And that can create a problem. Oh no, 70% is too low. Let's put that back up to 80% or in around there. I'm just sort of shooting in the dark. I actually can't see the percentage until it pops up. And the reason why that can be a problem, start it starts to burn early. And as you're burning, you're going to be lowering your periapsis. And if you burn too early, and if your periapsis is too close to the surface, you can lower the periapsis right into the surface of Moho and, well, the conclusion of that scenario should be fairly obvious. Obviously, I don't want that to happen. So the only solution I can come up with is to lower the thrust on the engine after I've entered in the command to con conduct the uh, maneuver into the Motec flight computer, and that way the burn will take longer than what the flight computer thinks it'll do, and the periapsis won't go down quite as quickly. So. While I have the thrust down, what I'm doing is I'm taking a close look at the periapsis being provided to me from Kerbal Engineer. It's not going down that quickly. I'm actually feeling pretty comfortable here. 
and I'm also looking at to my time to periapsis and once I'm comfortable that there's no way that that's going to end up into the surface or very close to the surface of Moho I'll put the thrust back up to 100% and everything will be fine and just let it continue with the burn after that. I wish the flight computer did a better job of dealing with the burn time. The issue is it doesn't deal with the variable mass that comes from burning away or using up the propellant, the liquid fuel in this case. Um, and that's a problem. That's the significant portion of the mass of this vessel is in the propellant. And if you're not, if you're doing a fairly small burn, it's not a big deal. The, the difference that comes in when it doesn't take into account the uh, changing mass of the vessel. But in a very large burn, and this is like a four kilometer per second burn, it makes quite a difference in how long it thinks it's going to take the burn to be. Let's talk a little bit about the contract. So as I already mentioned, I do have a communication contract. I have the window open there on the right, but I, I don't think I'll be getting the communication contract on this particular go around. I then also have a contract to do a high resolution altimetry scan of MOHO. That should be simple enough. Once I've established my orbit, I'll raise the high gain altimeter that is installed on this thing. And I also have a contract to do uh, an ore survey of MOHO, which also should be pretty st standard because I do have the ore survey thingy on the top of this vessel. It's pretty prominently sitting there. And we are now under 30 seconds away from periapsis. Oh, I can safely put this up to 100% now for the thrust limiter. To be honest, I'm not quite sure why I waited as long as I did. My periapsis never got below about 45 kilometers, so we were always comfortably above the surface of Moho. And now putting it up to 100% will mean we'll get this burn finished off a little bit more quickly. But I guess my fiddling around a bit with the thrust limiter did sort of mess up the burn because although Kerbal Engineer thought that my apoapsis was now a positive number, clearly when we took a look at map view here after the burn was completed, my eye uh, still shows me that I do not have a capture, but not a problem. Set up a very quick maneuver just a, a couple of minutes ahead of me. 30 meters per second was all that it took to fix that up. I still have 213 meters per second left in the vehicle. That should be plenty for me to get it into the orbit that I want to get it into. But all of that is going to have to be for next episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.